Hi. Um, in honor of uh, February National uh, Heart Month Awareness Month, um, I'm going to talk uh, about the DASH diet. Um, the DASH diet was uh, created a long time ago uh, for um, to control hypertension. And DASH is Dietary Approach to uh, Stop Hypertension. And it's rich in fiber, magnesium, potassium, calcium, and protein. And uh, so I'm going to show you how, what that means to you. So um, you want to make, you want to make sure that you, you get uh, your, your vitamins and your minerals from, from food, because you're not going to get them from supplements. I mean, some people will. Uh, but really, if you eat your, your vitamins and minerals, that's ideal. Um, so you want to make sure that you have, uh, make sure half of your plate is filled with uh, vegetables and fruits. And they don't have to be fancy uh, vegetables or fancy fruits that you're not familiar with. Use what you know how to make and... Um, uh, you know, lots of times in the wintertime we're, we're used to making soup and stew. That's a good way to incorporate vegetables. And uh, so you can use fresh vegetables. You can use canned vegetables and you can use frozen. I have uh, a package of vegetable stir fry mix here. And I like these ones because these vegetables were picked at the height of ripeness from the garden and then flash frozen and stored in the freezer. And um, I saw that at one of the grocery stores today, the, um, the frozen vegetables were on sale for like 88 cents a package. That's pretty affordable. Um, sometimes we get afraid when we go to the uh, grocery store and we see how expensive some of the, some of the fresh vegetables are. Um, and when you buy uh, like a stir fry vegetable mix like this, it's a lot easier to use a package of uh, vegetable mix that's already prepared for you rather than going and buying all of those different ingredients separately, broccoli, red peppers, uh, snow peas, asparagus, that's a lot of different um, items and, and you're going to throw away, there's going to be some waste with when you're using uh, fresh, fresh vegetables. So um, I'm a real big proponent of, of uh, frozen vegetables and we get um, canned vegetables with, uh, with commodities. You can have fresh vegetables or canned and so uh, canned vegetables are, are the same. They're picked at the, the peak of freshness from the gardens and canned uh, right away. They're, you know, they're good. Uh, fruits, um, we, we tend not to overeat fruit and so we always say eat the whole fruit rather than eat a whole, eat, eat a whole orange rather than eat, drinking the orange juice. The orange juice has had some of the uh, fiber and um, things taken out and if it's process, they've heated it, and so some of the vitamin C has been destroyed. And so eating a, a, the whole fruit is usually better. And I have blueberries here, but in the summertime when we're, when the huckleberries are ripe, we can really be eating um, huckleberries. Those are, um, we're used to eating, we're used to having those around. So fruit and vegetables and uh, healthy sources of protein. Uh, that's one of the one of the main uh, products in uh, the Dash diet, and so you really want to get a lot of your protein from from plant sources, which is beans. And here I have some lima beans, some pinto beans, and some split peas. Those are all really good sources, healthy sources of protein and fiber. But in addition to legumes, it's healthy to have fish. And this one here is. Uh, canned tuna, chicken, and of course, if you were being careful about your cholesterol, you would want to remove the skin from the chicken. And uh, fish, chicken, and red meat. And so I have a small piece of red meat here, and it's a, it's a hamburger patty. So on the DASH diet, you want to limit 
the amount of red meat you have um, and, and eat more of these items. Um, I also have some, um, the nuts, I have sunflower seeds here, but it could be any nuts. It could be walnuts, pecans, almonds, peanuts. Um, those are a healthy source of, um, of protein. So I'm gonna go back to the chicken. If you remove the skin from the chicken, you're removing the source of saturated fat, and that's important to, to heart health. The best source of calcium is milk, and I have here lactose-free, fat-free milk. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of our main sources of calcium. Um, you can get some, uh, some calcium from uh, calcium-fortified um, soy milk. Um, when you uh, buy plant-based milks, you want to look to see that it's calcium-fortified, because that's what the important thing about the milk is, is that you need the calcium um, for your hypertension. And, um, and when you have grains, you want to have whole grains. You want to replace processed pasta, uh, any of those grains, um, cereal. Those are all processed, and they've taken um, some of the vitamins and minerals out of um, those whole grains to make them tastier. And so anytime you can replace uh, a processed grain with a whole grain, I have here some um, oatmeal, barley, uh, br uh, brown basmati rice, popcorn, um, whole wheat spaghetti. And then I also have a bowl here that's quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A. And it's actually not a grain, it's a seed um, from that the uh, indigenous people in South America have been eating for a lot of years. Um, so it is, it's a good source of protein and fiber and, and, and the minerals that we're talking about today. So those are, that's how you get the, the ingredients or the uh, products for the DASH diet. Fiber, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and protein. Those are the main DASH diet um, ingredients. So, so how do you, how do you, how do you put that on your plate? So got a can of chili here from the grocery store and um, I'm gonna talk about sodium now. This can of uh, chili has 990 milligrams of sodium in it and it's 40, 41% of your diet if you have a, a diet of 2,000 calories. That's a lot. You, you want it to be less than 20% and 41% is definitely higher, higher than 20%, it's double. And then over here, I'm gonna show you um, on this piece of paper, I put some salt on, the, on, on here, and I measured out a quarter of a teaspoon. It's the smallest measure that I have, and that would be the equivalent to 500 milligrams of sodium or salt. Yeah, I shouldn't say sodium because we're talking about salt because that's what we're used to putting on our, on our table, on our plates. 500 milligrams is the amount that uh, the normal body uses in a day. That's what we, that's what we need. On uh, this other pile over here is, uh, is one teaspoon of, of salt and one teaspoon is... Um, the amount that we should have on the DASH diet. That would help us uh, limit our, um, the, limiting our sodium to this amount here would help us reduce our, our uh, blood pressure. Or if you have hypertension, it would help you reduce your, your blood pressure to treat that. So what we're talking about is, if you already have hypertension, we're talking about how do you treat it besides medication. Um, so this is one of the, this is one of the ways is by using the dash diet. This other this other pile of salt is two and a half teaspoons or four to six thousand milligrams of salt of sodium, and that's about what the average American eats. So we need five hundred, and we're eating about four thousand to six thousand. That's substantial um, difference we're eating over. And the way we're doing that is by having uh, processed foods like this um, when we could be 
using beans and um, throwing some vegetables in there with it. And even if you did use red meat, you could just put a little bit of red meat in a, in a whole pot of beans. And um, it would come out to way less, way less. Um, you could also use canned beans. They have some added um, sodium to them, but not anywhere near the level that it is in um, in the canned chili. And if you're and then just the two additional things that I want to add. This is the Dash diet. This is how you eat to reduce um, hypertension or to stop hypertension. Dietary approach to stop hypertension. There's two other things that we should consider and that is to re reduce the amount of sugar that you eat. So try to give yourself a treat, but have a treat in a week, not a treat every day or several times in a day. Try to really limit the amount of sugar that you have and the amount of, um, of, the amount of fat, like if you're gonna eat out, maybe you shouldn't eat uh, french fries. If you're gonna have a pizza, maybe you shouldn't have pepperoni on it. Maybe you should have something else on it, uh, Canadian bacon. And also the last thing, and um, it's, it's, it's important um, to reduce the amount of alcohol you're intaking. Um, men should limit the amount of alcohol they take to two drinks a day and women to one drink a day. Overconsumption of alcohol contributes to hypertension and heart disease. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, presentation on the DASH eating plan. You can go online and um, look it up. I found several sources that talk about um, the DASH diet. Um, of course, I went to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, but I also looked on um, the Mayo Clinic um, website and they have a really nice extensive discussion about the DASH diet. They show you how to create a meal plan. If you're um, really serious about it and you want to create a meal plan, they'll show you how to do that on there. We also have other dietitians who work for Tribal Health and Sierra Kirby and Katie Burton uh, both work in community health and they're community dietitians and Amanda Nobles is our registered dietitian nutritionist who works in the WIC program. So heart disease prevention starts when you're, before you're born, all the way through your lifespan. We don't wait until we're diagnosed with um, high blood pressure before we try to start treating it. We should be treating it and preventing it all the way through our life. So if you're on a DASH diet, that eating plan should be good for the whole family. And this is all about Go Red for Women. We're gonna do some drawings, um, I think, after this session. So make sure you comment in, in Facebook.